Hey guys, welcome to the third video and I've got a few things planned for this one. There are a couple features that I want to implement and the first one is integrating local storage into this because as you see when we like have some to do's over here then the issue is when we refresh all of them go away. Yeah, so as you see when I refresh the page all of them go away but we wanted to uh, persist past the sessions. And that we can do by uh, storing our state in local storage. So uh, recently I took a three hour long course by Kent C. Dodds on uh, fundamentals of React. It was hosted on the eggheads.io platform and it, it, it is the most amazing course that I've seen. So in one of the uh, lessons, he goes over how to uh, do this, like integrate state with local storage. And the solution that he uses is he defines his own custom hook and this is uh, his custom hook it's just a function that he writes which we can use instead of use state and let's see what is what it's doing right over here as we analyze it more we can use it better so uh, yeah here it is function use local storage you'll just copy this in once and then we'll analyze it And let's enlarge the screen. We don't need this anymore. Yeah, back to here. So this is basically a use local storage function. And all we need to do right now is replace a uh, use state with use local storage state. But thing is, it's good for us to at least understand how it's working to use it better. So first of all, he's just using use state over here. And uh, we are passing a, a key into the function, right? So, he's, uh, so uh, yeah, he's just using use state over here. And inside use state, he's saying uh, window.localstorage.getItem key. So, what it will, uh, or like double pipe symbol or uh, default value. So, what this should do is if there's uh, an item in the local storage with the key as key, the one we'll pass into, uh, into the function it will use that value otherwise it will use the default value being passed to it that's as easy as that and after that in the same function he sets up a use effect now what is use effect this is uh, this one this hook we're seeing for the first time i guess yeah use effect we are seeing for the first time so use effect basically uh, reruns every time it's the value of its dependencies change <clears throat> So as you can see in the use effect, the first argument is the function that we want to run and the second argument is the dependency array. So the dependency array, what this basically is that if any of the value out of key or state changes, the use effect will get run again. Yeah, so it will, uh, so this use effect allows us to, you know, uh, constantly update our state into the local storage. So input value, I don't want to store in local storage. We just want to use uh, to do's in local storage. So use local storage state. And this should do the trick pretty much. Okay, there's an issue over here. Maybe not. Yeah, let's see what the issue is. Hmm. Props dot to do's dot map is not a function. Why isn't it a function? I thought this would uh, work seamlessly, but this seems to have some issue with it. Okay, yeah, of course, there's an issue. <laughs> uh, we have to also pass in the key to this function and the key we want to be uh, to do's what a dumb error that was so the first argument is uh, to do's uh, which is the key that will be used in local storage and the second argument is the default value so let's try now to do add added to do to added and now when I try refreshing the page, then again an error. 
Okay, let's see what's up with this. 16 stacks. So. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what do we have in our local storage. No data present for the selected host. There's nothing in our local storage. Okay, wait, there is. To do's object, object, object. Oh, 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 hell. I, I, I think I recognize the issue. JSON dot stringify. And for this also we need to do json dot parse. I'll just explain in a minute uh, what went wrong and what we're trying to fix. Yep. I'll just delete the course current local storage. Just a second, I need to get rid of this. Okay, data delete. How do I delete the local storage data? Okay, right over here. Yeah, so now this should work fine. Let's just restart. Yeah, so as you can see, we are in a local storage right now, right over here. And I can't see. Yeah, so we are in a local storage for localhost 3000 right now. That's the URL or er. Uh, app is running on and right now the to do's array is just an empty uh, array okay I deleted it by mistake <laughs> yeah so that's that now we need to add to do yeah and as you can see uh, this is a to do's array in the local storage and a to do gets stored over here parsed values uh, object right over here inside the local storage we have a to do and when we click done uh, it should update over here in the local storage too because now our to do should be marked as done and see done is equal to true so that works seamlessly now let's just try refreshing once <sighs> I'm meant reloading Yep, and all the data is persisted through reloads. And if I try opening this up in another pane, <laughs> I misspelled. Yep, it's over here too. So, yeah, it's going to persist data throughout sessions and stuff in different panels and stuff so that's pretty great we have local storage issue sorted and to go over it once again uh, the issue we had was that in the local storage we were trying to save an array of objects but in the local storage you can only store strings so when you're storing over there we need to add json.stringify around our state and when we are uh, taking out that value we need to add json.parse around our state so that we string we uh, parse the uh, the object into a string and right over here we are converting the string into an array so that's all that json.stringify and json.parse are doing in case we were using just a string value as a state for example in uh, input value then this wouldn't have been an issue at all but uh, because we are having an array of objects as a state this uh, issue came up that was a simple fix for it yeah and now uh, the other feature that I want to have is that right over here uh, like beside uh, the, cr the cross mark I want to have a pencil uh, emoji and which we click on when uh, when we click on that 
it should open up a modal which allows us to edit the to-dos and this could very easily be done in line also I could have just allowed that uh, to change it into an input over here but uh, I want you know I want to have more uh, parameters later on like due date and priority and stuff and I don't think fitting all that into an inline form is uh, going to be that easy or feasible so I'm just going to change that into a model uh, let's see if we can get that done pretty well and we're going to be using Tailwind CSS for it and I'm a rust I'm a little rusty on Tailwind so we'll have to google a bit also so uh, let's start by creating a new first of all we, we'll just rename this file um, edit modal component yeah I don't know I can't get this extension to work I installed this extension for snippets but it doesn't work somehow so I've just got to do that myself the boilerplate import react from react then const what do we not, uh, want to call it edit model component and we set it to an arrow function this is basically your function based component export default edit model component yeah that should be it and let's just try importing it inside our index.js no app.js import edit model component from dot slash edit model component yeah that's pretty much fine and now we'll just return something to test it that I somehow didn't mess up in the boilerplate because of course this is my first react project so I don't I'm not really confident about this stuff too could have made a silly mistake or something so just below form input we'll just put in edit model component yeah so this works now uh, there is something that we need to do for it because we need to ha uh, have a way to switch uh, to you know act uh, pop the model in or uh, pop it back and we'll, we'll just use a state variable for it is edit model open and set is edit model open and we are going to do use state right over here and it will default to false right and uh, yeah and the another thing that we want to do is uh, we'll we'll also pass it the to do so uh, we need another variable maybe we don't maybe we do I'm not sure right now we'll see when we start implementing so uh, edit to do id set edit to do id so my reason to have this is basically uh, we need a way to you know also represent which uh, to do we want to edit and I th in my opinion we'll have to pass that into this model so yeah let's 
do that and we'll then do uh we'll pass it down is open as a prop so so this is going to be is edit model open so we are passing down that a uh, state variable that we had to this edit model component as a prop and yeah this is going to be div i i always forget to switch emit on in js files since the first day i was wondering why is emit not working in javascript and then i got to know that i need to have it enabled in the javascript files uh, it's just a setting change and i am too lazy to do that so we're just wrapping this all in a div and then uh, what we got to do is we'll have them as string literals template literals inside it so uh, let's see how i did this in these so that i remember properly yeah rather than wrapping them around in strings uh we got to wrap the whole thing around in curly braces to signify that this is js inside jsx and then these are just normal template literals that we have in javascript so uh, we are taking in props over here and if props dot is open so if is open is true we want a uh, display to be block for now otherwise we want it to be hidden and these block and hidden are just tailwind css classes let, let me just uh, confirm that these are the right classes and i'm not doing something else yeah so as you see tail, these both are just tailwind css classes dot hidden and dot block we can just set a uh, display to none and display to block through these classes easily yep so now my best guess is uh, when we uh, you know reload this page the i hi i am a model, edit model component will vanish which it did because we are saying props dot is open uh, so but we have given is open as false right now so do you know uh, just designer component we can set is open to true by default just so that it's easy to you know write the css for our component and when when once we are satisfied by how it looks we can do the thing and make it responsive and stuff like edit on open clicking the edit button so we want this to be position absolute yeah let's right there uh, now let's see these classes because i want it to be top 50 and left 50 mm. position yeah so we have set position to absolute but now we have to see how to uh, yeah top right bottom left and we want to center it right so hmm, i think i'll have to google a bit of how to make a model with tailwind till then let's just give it a proper background and padding so bg white it has a bg white i don't think it's very visible when we are doing this without a overlay so let's just give it a bg gray 700 so that it's easier to see its area for now and then we got to increase its padding p4 nah p8 be pretty nice yeah and then uh, what we need to do is 
around it yeah just makes it a little neater and then we need to set top and okay tailwind toolbox oh i heard of this one it has pre-made components that we can use close so let's just <clears throat> look at the code for this I can't seem to get this right over here, so let's just use our own brain to figure out how to do how to do this. Top zero, bottom zero. Uh, by default, Tailwind only provides zero and auto. Uh, you can change add or remove these by editing the theme dot inset section so it by default doesn't have any top half or something values so what we can do is we can just make this model full screen that would be pretty good too yeah yeah rather, oh, why why do this we, we can just make the model full screen we're just targeting small screens right now Because I don't want to, you know, properly install Tainwind and do that stuff right now. So, uh, because as you might be able to see, there's a little white space over here because we added rounded to it. We got to remove that. Yeah. So now this is our model, which is full screen. And this is our app.js. So if we set this to false, our model will go away. Yeah. So now what we need to do is now that we have our model in place, um, we need to have a way to trigger this. So in the to-do list component, first I want to edit the to-dos to have a edit button also. Right now they don't have an edit button. They just have this button, button dot on click. Yeah. So I'll just have to dive into CSS a bit. Every to do is a uh, flex testify between item center. So, if we add another, another button over here, it will mess up the spacing a bit. So, I think we'll just have to wrap both, both of those buttons. In a div so that they are one flex thing. So we'll just add another div over here. And now that should fix most of our issues. But now what we should do to increase the distance between them. First of all, edit will be before cross. last name margin right two we just adding a bit of the margin of the edit button so this there's a little separation but uh pencil emoji yep we want this right over here Yeah, so now we have a pencil and we have a cross. I guess we'll just have to add a little more space between them. So this is for editing. Yeah, this one's for editing, this one's for deleting. And right now the edit button does nothing. 
so we'll add an on click handler to it on click is equal to e yeah so props dot edit to do and we'll pass in the to do so right now we don't have this function written but it's just a matter of a couple seconds to couple <laughs> yeah, more than a couple seconds for us to write this function and make it do what it does so first uh, we'll pass it in as a prop even bef before we have written it edit to do and then we'll write this function const edit to do is equal to and it takes in the to do as its argument yeah that's a function now uh, the first thing that we have to do is um, we'll have to set a edit model to open set uh, is edit model open sorry guys I had to pause for a second so yeah we got a set is edit model open to true so that that will trigger our model to open but there's another thing that we need to do we need to set a edit to do id if that's what i called it yeah set edit to do id as the to do dot id so where were we yeah edit so yeah uh, we're doing this stuff because what we want to do is we'll open up the model on clicking this but we also need to know uh, that which uh, to do to edit so we'll store that in set edit to do id and now i'm sure there must be better ways to do this but this is the clearest one that i see right now <clears throat> and for edit model component we'll have to pass in to do id no we'll just pass it. yeah so let me think let me think we are passing it in to do id okay we'll see we'll see what to do so edit to do id so now our model knows which to do to edit we'll just try outputting the id of the to do over here so that we know this works fine props dot to do id Okay, <laughs> I got to wrap it in this for JS. It's not that. Yeah, so this ID must be right. I also set the text grade 100 so we can see better. Yeah, so uh, now let us think of a way to do this. Mm. So yeah, got it. We'll have a function const update to do yeah. So const update to do this is this this is when we hit submit on the edit model we wanted to run update to do so first uh, we need to set is edit model open to false right because we wanted to close when we have hit edit like when we're done editing so we set is edit model open to false and then what we need to do 
Mm. And this will also take in the to do. Hmm. Now this will take in the form data from that. So this doesn't need to do at all. What it will do is it will yeah. I've got it finally. Finally, I've got it. So, yeah. For now, let's just try making a form inside this. And I guess a lot of this would be duplication from the form component. I don't want it to be exact but similar. So I'm just going to pick this stuff in right there and then edit it as needed. Now let's see where we are at. When we hit edit, this opens up. Hmm. This is not exactly how we want it to be. So, worthful flex. This is fine. This is fine. On submit, props dot update to do, right? And then we have this label. And then we have this input. We'll also have to manage its value. Hmm. For now, let's just get rid of these values. And then there's this button, which is the edit button. And edit button shouldn't be edit button shouldn't be you know pizza mm. it should be tick mark so green tick emoji white heavy check mark yep I'm gonna have to do it again and get rid of this stuff I'm sure there must be some package uh, for react that has all the emojis in it <laughs> so that I don't have to google these again and again yep that's more like it and it doesn't look nice I can see so let's have it background as blue to 100 yeah. 100 rather and we'll have an h2 over here that says update to do And we'll take off the background from the green check mark. It just looks silly. Yep. It still isn't fine. But let's see another emoji. Something without the background, you know. Yeah, well, this will also do. Heavy check emoji. Oh damn, <laughs> I got a lot of stuff that I didn't need. Oh god. Guys, I'm going to have to pause again. I've got a call. Uh, I'll resume soon. Hey guys, I'm back and I know this doesn't look great right now, but my main focus isn't on the, uh, how it looks right now, but rather the functionality and we can always fix later how it looks so uh, just gotta add a bg to this ch check mark too because 
we finally found the one that will suit yeah this looks fine now we got to make this update uh, input working and now there are two things that we can do uh, we need to have the uh, state of this uh, input but we can either store that in the app area yeah so where was I I had to pause again it's a lot today so yeah we need to control the value of this input uh, so that we know what's being typed into this uh, we can either have that state in the app.js component which is our main thing or we can have that state inside edit modal component and pass that value in when we are hitting update uh, when we are hitting the tech right we can do that uh, but do we want to do that I don't know what the better approach is so let's just go with storing class in the same state storing the state in the same component right now and if we figure out a better way to do this later on then we can of course keep on uh, refining this and including better practices which is my plan what the hell text text lg now we got to remove the label i think we don't need the label rather than enter task we'll have edit task we don't need the id on it and we won't have a placeholder on it because it will just be a value yeah Why is it messed up like that? I didn't change a lot of things. Display. That should fix it, right? Yeah. And we'll just add a little margin bottom to the update to do text. okay so we have this now we got to bind a value to this and on check mark we need to update that so how do we do this let's see let's see let's see hmm yeah so we need to have a state const input value comma set I know this has to be wrapped around in uh, square brackets. I'll do that soon enough. I missed that. Use state. And you'll use state to be this an empty string. Nope. That's not how this is going to work. Uh, yeah yeah input value is going to be empty and before that we need to somehow uh, we have the to do id right so if we look in app.js where is it i need to <laughs> remember the shortcuts to switch between files and stuff yeah so we're giving it the to do id hmm But we need to prefill it also, right? So, edit to do is uh, doing this. So, set uh, rather than just passing the ID, I'll just pass in the whole to do and name it set edit to do and edit to do ID. So rather than passing just the to do ID, we're gonna pass it in the whole to do. Hmm. I'm really not sure if I'm using uh, the best practices when I'm 
thinking of a strategy of how to do this so what I'm going to do here is create another state variable to do and set to do and I'm going to initialize it to the to do passed to us in the props I am not even sure if this is possible to do and we'll also have to <laughs> change the name of this function from edit to do yeah we have some clashing of variables edit to do state I'm just adding state behind this so that <laughs> our names don't clash now in edit model component we have use use state but we have forgot to import it from react now when we click edit this is what happens and we can set this to props dot to do dot val ah some error over there Whew. Ah, there was just no. Okay, props dot to do is undefined. Yep, we just got to change this name. Now this should work. open up react developer tools and figure out if the data is actually being passed in yep as you can see we have a state as undefined and that so I guess we can't initialize state like that with props so we know our data is being passed in correctly we can see it right here passed in as props to do so in it uh, rather than setting it up like this we have what we have to do is we have to use a use effect it's another hook that we saw early on when we were trying to make local storage to work so use effect it takes in two parameters first is the function set input value to be props dot to do dot val and set to do to be props dot to do and initially a uh, state for to do is going to be an empty object so now that we have that set up, uh, we can use input value and to do over here. So for this input, what we want to do is we want to bind the value with input value and we want to bind on change with handle change. Now we have to write a function handle change a uh, const handle change equal to so 
e and set input value as e dot target dot value now let's see if this works if this works then in the update to do thing okay first you gotta import use effect if this works in the update to do input we'll see the value to do and it does work just the color is a bit uh, mashed up so you can't see that I'll just adjust the color text gray 900 and now we will be able to see this just fine oh still not working fine oh that was the wrong thing to update so we have to update we'll just update the color of that here and it should work fine yeah so we can see update over there and that is what we wanted to do right so now we have to figure out how to get this value back to the update to do function hmm Let's think, let's think, let's think. Okay. On the form, we have an on submit, and that is props.edit to do. Right. Now, this again, uh, I see this code that this code is really bad this isn't how stuff should work in my opinion but I can't think of a better way to do this so let's just do it this way and as and when we learn more of react we we'll include better practices which I keep on saying because it is what I will do and in the prop dot edit to do when we're calling edit to do we'll pass in the input value to it so right over here okay 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 so we have to pass in update to do which is also a function which we will call so right here update to do and right over here instead of edit to do we'll do update to do and in app.js we'll take in to do text then we'll set uh, is edit model open to false because we need to close the model i think we should keep that for last before we do the uh, we'll do the processing and then i think we can pick up a lot of this uh, first two lines from this code that is for mark 10 what we are doing here is we're just uh, copying the current to do's into a new array and then uh, we are finding the to do that we want to edit and instead of to do dot id what we need to do over here is uh, we'll access a state variable edit to do id edit to do state dot id because that is the to do that we want to edit and then we have to set t dot var is equal to to do text i hope this works and then set to do's to new to do's okay and then we'll just have to do a bit of cleanup set edit to do state to null this 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 should do the trick in my opinion i know this is not very scalable because 
if we have a lot of forms we will have to maintain things for each and every one of it but let's see now where do we have an error on submit we have an error maybe just uh, syntax thing yeah just an extra brace over here yeah now this should work per per perfectly to do one to do update it no it doesn't let me update the to do so set okay let's just see how we did this in the form component so input value is prop dot value okay so we need to see the handle change function yeah that's what i'm doing const handle change set input value to e dot target dot value this should work fine i have no idea why it doesn't because this is exactly what we did before i am trying to type in but nothing is happening so we'll a component is changing a controlled input of type text yeah this is our error i think hmm todo is assigned a value but never used react hook use effect contains a call to set input value without a list of dependencies this can initiate uh, pro props to do as a second argument to the use effect hook okay 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 i think uh, no i don't know what's wrong so our error is in the input we we are trying to make it a controlled input but somehow it is not hmm we have got to pass in we forgot to pass in the empty dependencies list to use effect i would that fix stuff let's see not sure and now it isn't even setting the value cool don't know what's wrong with this if we just add props to to do over here yep to do update oh hell i see what i forgot to do <coughs> in app.js it 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 works right but there's a thing that we need to do before that we need to prevent default we also have the e which is the event that fired off and we want to do e dot prevent default yeah i i am praying this works yeah so to do updated twice uh it didn't work apparently e dot prevent default is not a function hmm i'm really lost on some of this stuff but it's fun to figure this out and run into these challenges 
so now we gonna remove everything else and just have our logs uh, this is we are going to have to persist logs to see it because right after that uh, our page is getting refreshed so our logs are getting refreshed so to do updated to and undefined it's not getting the e variable uh, which is the uh, event variable that we need to pass in as well I forgot that it's not being called directly and it's being called like this yep I hope this works I really do hope this works okay now it does work no it doesn't but this problem is solved that uh, we get the event that's nice that's nice that's nice that's nice now we're gonna set persist logs to false and type error props dot to do is null props dot to do is null okay cool 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 we can't set prop dot to do's prop okay so in the app dot js after doing this we are setting it to null but rather we should set it to an empty object hmm So to do to do now this works seamlessly to do update to do update new to do new to do two and we'll rena rename this as old to do <laughs> yeah you see it's it's also preserving its location and stuff yeah so now I'm really happy that this works but I again I know that this code is shit this code is really bad the way I have handled the forms and the input it's really bad we have to improve on this so before doing any other refactoring in the next video I just want to improve the CSS and styling for this because uh, it's going to act as a hindrance when we try to you know incorporate more features so the next video I'm just going to settle on a component library either material UI or what was it material UI or ant design or base web components let me know which one you want me to try out I'll try out one of the component libraries and then uh, we'll improve this stuff and make this with a component library so we don't have so much of issues with handling new features and stuff because obviously when I want to add new forms and stuff like uh, a form element for due date and priority and stuff it's going to act as an hindrance because we're going to have to change the uh, CSS over here a lot so I'd rather just rebuild this with some component library and make the changes accordingly also I, I this code is really bothering me I'll figure out a better way to do this I'll you know dive into the code for some other react projects and stuff that people have made real projects so I know how to handle this stuff I hope this comes out better next time because I'm really not happy with how the code is right now and yeah so I don't think <laughs> this should be like this or anywhere near there have to be better practices to handling forms and I'll have to figure it out but at least we've got this to work and in software engineering what I've heard is and what I've begun to believe is when you get it working that's when the real work starts because first you have to get it working then you can make it efficient because rather if you're a pro then you'll <laughs> go straight in from the start so next video it's decided we're gonna work on styling this better and just making it look better so that's it for today's video see you in the next one